Hey, welcome back, everybody, to another episode of The Nonprofit Show. We're really excited because if you joined us in the green room earlier, we're talking to Melissa Pinard, Head of Product Management from Bloomerang Volunteer. You know, Melissa, I love talking to you for so many reasons, which we're going to get into, um, because I think your backstory is fascinating, but you come to us from the amazing organization Bloomerang who's been so supportive of us, so supportive of the industry. But we're going to be talking about a different type of support, and that's volunteer appreciation. I think that you know a lot about this, don't you? Absolutely, yeah. So so as you mentioned, so previous co-founder of that Bloomerang volunteer product that got acquired by Bloomerang last year. So I've been living and breathing the volunteer management problem for well over a decade now. I've learned a lot of great tips from customers over the years, and I'm really looking forward to sharing them today. I am excited because we don't talk about this enough. And I know with our new co-host panel, when we were having a team meeting and talking about this, they all got really excited about this topic because individually, all of these folks were saying the same thing like we're going to be talking about today. And that is, what the heck? Why as a sector don't we spend more time and attention on this? This is the lifeblood of so many organizations. And so we're going to be excited to hear what you have to say. We're also super excited to thank our amazing sponsors, and they include, as Melissa mentioned, Bloomerang, American Nonprofit Academy, Nonprofit Thought Leader, Staffing Boutique, Your Part-Time Controller, 180 Management Group, Fundraising Academy at National University, JMT Consulting, and Nonprofit Tech Talk. Okay, Melissa Pinard, Head of Product Management for Bloomerang Volunteer. Tell us your journey, but start out with where you are. Okay. So first and foremost, I want to thank the nonprofit show and thank you to all of your listeners here for giving me the opportunity to share. It's an absolute privilege to be here again. I think this is my second time attending, so yeah. thrilled to be back. Uh, my current position right now is head of product at Bloomerang Volunteer. Uh, Bloomerang acquired us back in at the end of 2022, so just over a year ago now. Uh, and we have a full integration offering value on both the donor side and the volunteer management side. Because again, most volunteers are donors, believe it or not. Yes, they are. Mm-hmm. And I love that you said that. Um, and maybe that's something that we should start with really briefly before we get into it. Because I feel, and I love your opinion on this, but I feel that there's a lot of uh, a lot of folks in development that say hands off the volunteers, don't ever you know broach them for becoming a donor. You know the volunteers are the volunteers, and we can't interrupt that sacred relationship. What do you say about that? Yeah, well, statistics show volunteers are more because they're already passionate about the cause that they are giving their time to, mm-hmm. a majority of them are actually already giving their dollars to, and it's it's not a faux pas to double dip. Um, you you actually are sitting on a base of potential donors there with it. And yeah, a lot of them do it already because they're so passionate about the cause. Let me dig down a little deeper on this. If you are looking to steward them towards a, a donor you know, relationship. Do you think it's appropriate to do this, you know, like at the end of their volunteer, like what, if like, say they've come to your campus or they're doing something, or do you wait, like what's the protocol or best practice for that? Yeah, that, that's a great question. And I don't think there's any best practices specifically, but I do think um, when you're running specific campaigns or doing outreach campaigns, you know, email campaigns or even fundraising events, Mm-hmm. invite them along as attendees too, not only volunteers, because odds are they're they're going to donate. And and again, if you're doing some email campaigns, there's no reason why you should exclude them from, from the list in, in that sense as well. Yeah. I, I love that you helped kind of clear that up because I have sat in many a board meeting, t- spoken with development directors, and that, you know, that for organizations that have a volunteer coordinator, um, under programming or something like that, man, those two kind of cat fight like cats and dogs at times, you know, they're very like, 
don't offend my volunteers, you know? Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's such an interesting relationship. And I think most volunteers have no idea that this goes on within the nonprofit world. No, I don't think they do. And and so so us at Bloomering right now, we're all about helping nonprofits thrive and we help them cultivate and foster authentic relationships. So mm-hmm. so part of those relationships are all about the way like the various ways in which we give and volunteers are so special in that sense because they're not only giving their time to the organization but in most cases like I said they're giving their dollars as well so again yeah. it's so very important to foster that relationship um it needs to be taken care of and and again one of the ways in which you can do that is hosting a volunteer appreciation event to show your gratitude I love it well let's dig into this because again not to like you know be flogging ourselves but we don't do a good enough job on this. And one of the pieces of advice you give us is to start even thinking about this process of having a volunteer appreciation event by assembling a team. What does that look like to you? Yeah. Okay. So because this would be an appreciation event for your volunteers, Mm -hmm. I'd be very hesitant to ask your existing pool of volunteers to help with the planning right? This is an event for them. So (laughs) ideally you should be looking for people who have some kind of a connection to your volunteers still, but aren't volunteers themselves. Mm -hmm. So think of members of your organization, like your paid employees or, or your staff and, and see if you can come up with a committee. And then from there, once you have those people, there's some, some key roles you'll want to delegate out. I love it. I think that's brilliant. And I also would imagine that if you could kind of start to perfect this um, and and put it into your rotation of events, um, that this team could be, you know, motoring along in that same journey with you, right? Absolutely. Yeah. And this is definitely something you'd want to consider making a reoccurring event just because it's going to help with your overall retention rates too. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Let's talk about emphasizing volunteer impact. What does that look like to you and how should we even be thinking about this? Yeah, so so emphasizing impact is all the ways in which you can show and tell your volunteers how their commitment and time is making a difference and how that hard work is paid off. So this can be done through showing hard data and statistics about maybe, you know, the number of clients served or the collective number of hours worked throughout the year, or even like the monetary value of those hours. And and that's something you're going to be able to get out of any volunteer management system. You can probably pull that data for you. And I am product manager. I, I love data and it's always great seeing the numbers, but You know, numbers don't always resonate. What I think would go the longest way, resonate much deeper to your helpers, would be inviting key roles to come and speak and tell their stories, right? So this would include like your beneficiaries, clients, board members, presidents, even yourself if you want to speak. But you're going to want to encourage them to speak about real situations, make sure they're giving thanks, and really highlight the impact that those volunteers had throughout the year because it will make them feel the emphasis of how essential they are to your mission. I love that. You know, before the pandemic, we used to use a number that the Bureau of Labor Statistics gave on the value of a volunteer hour. And this was not like, um, say, like high level, if you were a physician or, you know, an educated thing. This was just the normal American that would show up and volunteer. And I want to say it was like $37.45 and 45 cents or something like that. Do you have a number like that off the top of your head? I, I do. So it goes up every year. I can check it for you, but there's an official website for the value of an hour that you can, you can Google and it's right smack there. And I'll give you the most recent updated version of that, but yeah, it's, it's definitely in the high thirties late, 40, yeah. early 40 dollar range. Yeah. From what I and remember. I think that's really important to know, because if you're looking at what your volunteer hours are, you know, adding up, you'll be like, okay, well, we got 600 hours. we got 400, we got 4,000, whatever that number is. But when you multiply that out towards that hourly rate, holy smokes, that becomes like some real value there. 
Yeah. And then the organizations can take that and apply to grants with that information too, yeah. in order to get that money back into the organization. So it's a, it's a super um, important metric to track too. Mm -hmm. And again, any like even Bloomerang volunteer, that, that is a feature in the system that you can do and you can customize mm -hmm. um, hours tracking and, and the monetary value of whatever you want an hour to be worth. You know, let me kind of segue into a, a different question. And that is with your experience, how often do you think nonprofits, and we, we go by this number, 1.8 million registered nonprofits in the U.S. I don't know what it is in Canada, sure. but how many organizations or what percentage do you think are even tracking vo this volunteer impact? Honestly, it, it probably depends on like the segment and size of the organizations. If you're, you know, small or under small and not a lot of them are currently doing that today usually like mid-size to larger organization that's when it starts to get really important too but oh oh gosh definitely a, a handful majority of the smalls don't right now if yeah. you had to track just one thing that that you could literally put up at the front desk or just something basic what would that be but what uh, stat in, would you be chasing yeah, so outside of the world of fundraising and dollars raised and all of that, and strictly speaking on the volunteer management side, I would definitely say the the hours work, the collective hours worked across volunteers, because that again has this it has not only value but meaning too. This is the amount of time people have given us, yeah. uh, just from a volunteer perspective, anyways. That that's definitely the the key metric to track for sure. Well, great, I appreciate you you know, giving us that insight. I, I kind of would have guessed you would have said that, but then I thought I better like drill down on this and make sure mm -hmm. that what I'm intuiting is actually really where, where we're going. Another yeah. thing you talk about is to publicly recognize your volunteers. And this is an interesting thing because I'm wondering about how we do this, why we do this. Is there ever a time when maybe somebody says, I don't want this recognition? Yeah, yeah. So there's there's so many ways you can make your volunteers feel valued, especially when you're thinking about it in terms of an appreciation event. So I always love seeing people, you know, win awards or get certificates for their hard work, you know, maybe the person who worked the most hours this year or whatnot. But one thing I would encourage everyone to think about is that there are things you can do leading up to the event and there's things you can do after the event happens as well that you can continue on. So really taking a look at the platforms you have access to, right? Like your corporate website or your social media channels that you can leverage. Again, there's there's so much you can do um, for that. Like uh, leading up to the event, you can use those channels to spotlight your volunteers and share some information about their service to their organization. There's always going to want to be volunteers that don't participate and they can communicate that and you don't have to share them specifically. But um, I've seen organizations showcase public leaderboards of who's worked the most hours in the month, the year, or even across the lifetime. One thing I've seen too is they actually, before the event, about two weeks, like a week or two before the event, they'd take it down to build up suspense to figure out who those awards are going to be given to. So that's kind of a fun idea. And then, uh, so after the event play takes place too, um, there are things where um, if volunteers weren't able to attend, you know, you could host a live stream of the occasion or, you know, even send out a recording of it afterwards so that they still feel like they were part of the night, even though, you know, they couldn't attend. Um, after the event as well, um, get share photos out too with little thank you notes and captions and kind of continue the, the streak, um, of appreciation. I think one of the most important things that we can see, and sometimes that we, we don't see in this public recognition is a step and repeat. And, and I think it's just a really basic thing to have, you know, logos on a step and repeat, just like you see at a Hollywood movie premiere where groups that come or people that come to an event. Um, and generally this is outside in the pre-function space or as you're coming in um, because you want them to become your champion and you want them to share images and upload it to their social. So 
I think this is just such a great thing that you you remind us about is that, you know, as we are celebrating somebody, they can be celebrating us, right? And yeah, and it takes a conscious effort to think about it and and to actually plan to continue to do it as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. But it's so ab- important. Yeah. Absolutely so important. Um, I want to get into this kind of issue, and this is a sticky wicket for so many people getting creative with your appreciation gifts. Do you do appreciation gifts? Do you give certificates? I mean, like what's the lowdown and what are you seeing? Yeah. Okay. This is one of my favorite topics because I'm such a gift giver, (laughs) but I always say, you know, every, every great event that I've ever been to has food and party favors. Honestly, even if it's just pizza and branded swag, it goes such a long way, but you know, that for some organizations that, that can be difficult to do, right. They have a limited budget. And, and so there's things that, you know, we have to consider, um, they don't have to be fancy or physical really. And at the end of the day, as long as it comes from the heart, I think that's, what's most important. Right. So, so some examples of those could be, you know, handwritten notes, don't cost okay. anything except for time. You mm-hmm. know, you could write your volunteers individual handwritten notes. I've seen some organizations to create beautiful thank you videos by filming, you know, messages from everyone on the team, recognizing their hard work. And the mm-hmm. thing with a video is that they last forever, right? It's it's so personal and volunteers can keep it for years to come or even share it right on social or with their friends and family. Mm-hmm. Um other budget-friendly ideas too. I am such a huge fan of puns. We have an entire Pinterest board. I think there's about 300 punny appreciation gifts posted to it, but it's such a cost-effective solution. But you're going to see things like so simple, like, you know, little Starbucks frappuccinos with a note that says, thanks a latte. Mm -hmm. I've seen jars of Tootsie Rolls with thanks for the role you play or, you know, a bag of mints that say, thanks for your commitment. These are all like super easy, budget-friendly things you can do. They just take time. And honestly, Julie, I could go on. I have so many more. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. I love it. Well, one of the things that we have for those of our viewers, you can see, um, you know, on our slide, we have a gentleman, uh, we we see the back of him, he's in a bright blue t-shirt, and it says volunteer on the back. Talk to me about the importance of t-shirts. It seems to me that when I'm in a public space, and they're throwing out t-shirts, or they're giving t-shirts out, people act like they're throwing out bars of gold. And I'm wondering, you know, like, it, what your thoughts are on that, because I feel like this is something you can get underwritten um, by a corporate sponsor. There are nonprofits that have T-shirt printing, you know, divisions of their of their organizations. I mean, it just seems like a an interesting thing that is pretty simple. But could you tell me what your yeah. thoughts are? Yeah. Well, if you think of what a T-shirt represents, right? It's 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 representing the cause that the person cares about the most. And it's almost like a label, like this is me, this is what I'm dedicating my time to. But also the thing with t-shirts is that they they represent a team and they represent a community too, like you're part of something. So mm-hmm. having everyone dressed in the same colors, there's a community aspect to it as well that you're, you know, representing, you're all there representing the same cause too. So t-shirts go a long way. Yeah, yeah, they do. They really, really do. I think it's also, if you are um, a corporate, you know, entity and you're delivering or you're, you're gathering up your employees to go volunteer at an event, I think it's like brilliant. It's like cheap and dumb marketing. It's the most basic thing you can do is yeah. give everyone a t-shirt. You might spend 10 bucks on it and then you let them out and anyone who sees that group in red or blue or green or whatever with your logo on it. I just think it's like, you know, it, yeah, it connects your volunteers to Mm -hmm. your cause more deeply too. Right. And it, it's going to, at the end of the day, make sure they stay involved with, with your mission. Right. Right. We don't have much time and I could be talking to you about this all day. 
Uh, we don't have a lot of time left, but I would love for you to kind of give us your sage advice on the difference between our corporate volunteer groups and our individual. And I'm wondering if you see like a big difference on how we should be thinking about events. Should we really be thinking about our corporate, you know, larger groups first or the individuals or toss them all together? Like, how do you stratify this? Yeah, I think with, so if you think about corporate volunteerism, usually it's a group of people donating their time as a team with yeah. corporate volunteers too. They, they tend to be, um, we call them like one-time givers or infrequent givers, whereas your hardcore volunteers, your reoccurring volunteers who come back, you know, on a weekly basis, some of them come every other day. Mm -hmm. um, those, I think, you're going to want to spend a little bit more time cultivating that relationship on. Now, I, there, there's no rules, so you can invite all your volunteers to the same event. Um, but I would, you know, consider that relationship slightly different than than the corporate ones. I appreciate you saying that and, and kind of giving us a lens with which to look at this type of a thing. Um, because it is, it's a major, it's an event, you know, you're, you're doing an event, whether it's black tie or it's, you know, something that's more casual on your campus, it doesn't matter. It's an event and it takes time and energy and money and it, it's a, it's a heavy lift for so many of us, but it just seems to me, we don't see this enough and we aren't in the habit of doing it. Maybe even more importantly, we're not in the habit of doing it. And I'm wondering if you see now that we're coming out of the pandemic and we're, you know, doing more events in general, what's your hope scale for this? I mean, do you think things are going to be, you know, moving forward or is this old school thinking of having an event? Like, give us that that final bigger picture. Yeah, the well, during the pandemic, the events industry definitely took a hit. That's mm -hmm. for sure. Well, in-person events anyways. But then you saw the rise of virtual events yeah. coming. And there's no reason why you can't host a virtual event or a virtual appreciation event for your volunteers as well. If, you know, logistics and, you know, you can't get a venue or whatever for the physical event, there's always ways in which you can take time out. And I think it's just a matter of, sticking to the schedule and just holding yourselves accountable to doing it and planning it however often you want to do it. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm going to share with you um, one of my, in, in preparation of our chat today, I was thinking about the best um, events that I, volunteer appreciation events I've been to over three decades. And um, I served on, on the board of at the time was the nation's largest domestic violence shelter. And the young woman who ran the, uh, she had a lot of things she had to do, but one of the things that she did and she did really well was the volunteer appreciation event. And I always volunteered as a board member to go and work it because it was like the most joyous, fabulous thing. And she created all these different awards. And like you said in the beginning, Melissa, you know, how many hours worked by this group. And, and we, we would have large groups within large corporations in our community um, compete, you know, to, to do the most hours and, you know, do these drives and everything. And today that young woman is the governor of our state, Katie Hobbs. Really? Oh, yeah. wow. Wow. Yeah. yeah. So Isn't cool. that cool? That. Yeah. Very yeah. cool. It's really cool. And I, I thought about that and I was like, holy cow, you know, Katie Hobbs put that on. And it was, I, I'll tell you, you know, working in domestic violence, it's it's a tough topic and you don't get a lot of wins, right? Mm -hmm. You don't get a lot of things to celebrate, yeah. especially publicly. And yet this was one of those things that was very public and it was very positive positive. And it was very hopeful and it was very joyous. And I've got to believe that folks that left that event were like, when can we volunteer again? Like Inspired. in the parking yeah. lot, right? Leaving yeah. the event. It was casual. We held it in a, um, every year 
in a church um, like community center, wasn't affiliated with our group at all, but we could, they, they gave us the space. We had like a hamburger and hot dogs kind of, you know, cuisine. It was not food. Fancy. food. <laughs> food. <laughs> Yeah, and t-shirts, my friend. There you go. Yeah, that one thing you mentioned too that I really liked hearing you say was the the fostering of friendly competition, not only amongst like the corporate volunteerism, but you know that can happen too if if you show that public leaderboard amongst your own volunteers is getting more time donated to the organization just purely out of competitive nature of people. Right. Yeah. Well, one of the things that she did, and you know, and the team did, is that they really made that event. It was like quasi Academy Awards, to, you know, it was a lot of a lot of awards, right? You know, best drive, right? Because there were groups that had, you know, drives. There was the number of hours, you know, it was the best project. It was you know, all these different things that people did and um, where they, you know, came up with an idea or they, you know, took a part of the campus and they beautified it or they decorated um, you know, some of our um, shelter space or, you know what I'm saying? It was, there was a lot of things going on. It wasn't just one type of volunteering. And I think that was for me, that also became very inspirational, right? Because it, yeah. it, 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 it gave me I new ideas. Oh my gosh, we could do that. We could, you know. There are people telling their own stories of how they gave. Yeah. It's the power of, yeah. Storytelling. Yeah, the power of storytelling. Well, you, my friend, are fabulous. And I love your story. I love how you have um, expanded so much greatness in our sector. And of course, your partnership with Bloomerang and ultimate uh, leadership with the Bloomerang volunteer. Super cool thing. Super important. Melissa Pinard, head of product management at Bloomerang Volunteer. Check out bloomerang.com and you can learn more about the things that they've got going on and you can follow Melissa and, and her work and get her amazing thought leadership. You know, um, Melissa, no secret, I'm a huge fan of Bloomerang, but one of the things that I appreciate the most, it's like our conversation today, you all give freely a hell of a lot of information. You do not have to be a client of Bloomerang to get these resources and learn and get training. And to me, that's just magical. So I applaud you and your team on that. Yeah, yeah. We're all about making the world a better place, whether you're a customer or not. It's all about giving. Yeah, I love it. Well, it's really, really been fabulous to share this time with you. And again, we share our time and our presenting sponsors share their resources with us. And they include Bloomerang, as we just mentioned, American Nonprofit Academy, Nonprofit Thought Leader, Staffing Boutique, Your Part-Time Controller, 180 Management Group, Fundraising Academy at National University, JMT Consulting, and Nonprofit Tech Talk. These are the folks that are with us day in and day out, so we can have these fabulous conversations like we have had today here with Melissa Pinard. Okay, I'm super excited to get out, find some new volunteering, um, you know, things going on in my own community, and then watch and see Who's really celebrating this? We're not doing this enough. I'm calling people out today, Melissa. Agreed. Yes. Thank you so much. It was a privilege to be here as always. And again, if you ever have any questions or inquiries about volunteer management or even, you know, fostering those relationships, I'm here to chat. Happy to have you reach out. I love it. Well, we will be talking with you again. And I'm just delighted that you would share your wisdom and your insight with us. Hey, everybody, as we end every episode, we like to leave with this message. And it goes like this, to stay well so you can do well. Thanks so much, Melissa. We'll see you again.